So I was just beginning uh, junior high and high school when Title IX came about. And I remember the opportunities for my brother, my older brother, but there were no opportunities for my sister and I outside of school. In those days, we went and changed into these ridiculous one-piece one uh, shorts outfits if you were a girl. I remember we wore the jumpsuits. We didn't really feel like athletics. Every decision that we make as administrators, we have to look at it through the lens of Title IX. I think that um, we have to see how does it affect other programs, our student athletes, and how, how we are providing access and opportunities for our student athletes. You see a lot of athletes, male and female, who haven't yet peaked when they're in high school. You know, they may have been doing soccer, either at school, club soccer, whatever it is, whatever sport it is. They may not be good enough to have been recruited right into a D1, two or three school. They still wanna compete. They may or may not think they have an opportunity to go to a four year after that. But what they know is that athletics is really important to them and they want one last chance. We don't ever want to go backwards. We want to get better and better and better. And I would say as we improve women's athletics, you're also going to improve men's. There's always room for improvement in everything we do. So if you improve one, the other one's going to come along too. We started the Community Athletic Project back in 2018, and it was a way for us to give back to the community, the young people of the community. This golf tournament is, is this golf tournament gives us an opportunity to, to say thank you to everybody, to say thank you for being a part of this. Let's get out and have a good time playing some golf and, and, and have fun and enjoy ourselves and have a, a communal opportunity to say thank you. And we got some perfect weather for it. So Absolutely. <laughs> you know, the, last year we had 115 degrees, this year we're at you know, 80 and it's, it's beautiful and nice right little breeze. I look back now and realize that I didn't have the opportunities. Back then, I didn't know any better. I knew it was coming, and I remember back then, we talked about it as equal rights. 
I didn't know that I was supposed to have those opportunities. I was just frustrated that my brother got to do it and I didn't. It's just amazing, but I think this 50th anniversary has given us an opportunity to celebrate and to know that our female coaches can figure out how to be mothers, how to live lives, and how to be successful coaches. And they're now the role models to those student athletes. What I learned in my first semester in college was that I could run. And so I took a running class. I got into running. I lost 50 pounds and I started doing half marathons. And that was really transformational for me. Never would have been competitive, but what a difference it made for my personal psyche, my personal health, body image, all kinds of things. If we didn't have athletics in colleges, community college or otherwise, my ability to have taken that running class, to have found that something inside of me that that clicked with, I wouldn't have had it. And so it's really important that we provide that opportunity, team sports or not, because it's so impactful for students when they come to us. Jeff Storing off with you on tonight's coverage. And uh, Jeffrey, uh, Western State battle here in Lancaster. And uh, Monica Hang at the helm for LA Valley with the win last time versus AVC in a hot contest. And uh, we're looking for a good matchup here tonight. Yeah, two teams that have really turned it around uh, in recent weeks. Uh, Antelope Valley had lost six of seven heading into conference play. They're now six and three in conference. They have really reversed their season. LA Valley started five and six. They've won 10 of their last 11. They now come in atop the Western State Conference at eight and one, having won 10 of their last 11. So it's an interesting matchup on paper. Second meeting between these two teams and a couple of teams that no question are now heading in the right direction as postseason play looms. Yeah, I think earlier in the season, you, you saw it starting to slip away for uh, the Lady Marauders, and they have turned things around and really just the, the amount of cohesion amongst themselves and utilizing the outside shooty, shooting of uh, Bailey Cassell and Kristen Lopez uh, has really been key in establishing uh, the big in the middle and Courtney Hart. Yeah, Lopez tied for third in the entire state in three-pointers made and in three-pointers made per game. So she's a volume shooter, but shoots at a really good clip as well. And don't underestimate, of course, as I know you wouldn't, but the impact of Courtney Hart as well operating down low, that gives more room to Cassell and Lopez. So Barry Green now has a very nice offensive dynamic with this team. Indeed, we are a moment away. We're a step away for the National Anthem live from Lancaster, the Monarchs and the Marauders here on SoCal College Sports.
And we welcome you back to Antelope Valley College, set to get underway, LA Valley and Antelope Valley here on SoCalCollegeSports.com. Let's set the starting fives for you. First for LA Valley, Jacqueline Provado, Jordan Huron, Emily Brunia, Lena Vo, and Diani Del Castillo. And for ABC, it'll be Alyssa Taylor, Bailey Cassell, Kristen Lopez, Miracle Jackson, and Courtney Hart. And Mike, a couple of interesting notes. Talking about LA Valley and talking uh, with Monica Hang, we've heard of two guard offenses, we've heard of three guard offenses. This is a five guard unit. A couple of players no longer with the team, and they have really gone somewhat positionless here. Monica Hang said, uh, we just kind of match up how we match up, but really we've got five guards in this lineup. So LA Valley uh, comes in maybe a little bit undersized, but they're certainly game. Miracle Jackson, meanwhile, fouled on the offensive rebound. She'll head to the line, first free throw up and good. Meanwhile, for ABC, they continue to rotate in the starting lineup. Miracle Jackson back in the starting lineup, replacing Bridget Ignacio, who will come in off the bench. Uh, that's not unheard of, but Ignacio had been starting for much of the year, but Barry Green makes the decision to get Jackson into the starting lineup and bring Ignacio off the bench. Jackson hits them both. And it's a 2-0 lead for the Marauders. As LA Valley will go on offense, Lena Vo on the cut, tries to feed it outside. Looking for Provado, kicked out of bounds, shot clock at 20. And the Monarchs will bring it in. Jordan Heron, the leading scorer, leads in all the major categories. But it's Provado around and out on the three. The rebound off to Jackson. And Taylor will bring it over. But Heron coming off a triple-double in a win over Canyons. That came earlier in the week. Cassell off a of Taylor screen. LA Valley, one of the better defensive teams in the entire state. Cassell on the drive. Goes glass, lays it in. Quick start for the Marauders. They lead it 4-0. Take you down to the floor here. And Cassell, who struggled somewhat in ABC's last game, that was a win against West LA but gets off to a fast start here, making her first bucket. It's a 4-0 lead. To finish the point on the Monarchs, uh, they're top 10 in the state in field goal percentage allowed. They're ninth, just under 33% per game on the season for their opponents. So they are an outstanding defensive team. Points should be hard to come by. Jackson hands to Cassell. Cassell gets a good screen from Jackson. Hoist from three, no good. Rebound off to Lena Vo. Maybe rushed a little bit there Vaux for Bailey. Transition, good feed, finds Brunia, shot off the back iron, but an offensive rebound by Del Castillo and another chance for the Monarchs. Such great job by Hart, staying straight up, not drawing the foul, just holds her position and has to force a kick out. How about Lena Vo? Two buzzer beaters in the last three games for LA Valley, who come in having won six straight. But she has been Travel. icy down the stretch. Gets away with a the travel Another there, travel. Brunia, with the shot clock at four. Now on a bit of a scramble, Provado shot, caroms off to the corner, and Lopez will chase it down. Well, Jeff, what do we often say? Ball don't lie. <laughs> you, me, and Rasheed Wallace. We're so often on the same page, Michael. Tipped away by her own. Be interesting to see the next time down watching LA Valley. If they put the ball in Jordan Heron's hands, which they like to do. Again, not just the leading score, but leads them in rebounds and assists at 5.3 a game. So she is an effective passer. And LA Valley struggling offensively right now. Reach in foul on Del Castillo. On the drive as Del Castillo comes in to help and. It gets in the face. Yeah, it's a contact sport. Deani Del Castillo, a transfer from Glendale College where she played significant minutes a year ago. But an interesting story as she comes to LA Valley, despite being in the starting lineup a year ago for Glendale, as they had an outstanding season and another trip to the Sweet 16. But Monica Hang talking about Deanna Del Castillo wanting to come to LA Valley to develop more of her game overall, felt that she was used primarily as a spot up shooter at Glendale and was thinking about the next level and wanted to become uh, more uh, of a strong player in all facets. And she's been given that opportunity here at LA Valley. Meanwhile, after a couple of more free throws, a 6-0 lead. Vo working on Hart, back outside. 
Three all the way is good. Heron steps into the three. And Jordan Heron gets the Monarchs on the board with the triple. 6-3. You mentioned, Michael, that this is the second matchup between these two teams. They met back on January 7th. It was a 10-point win for LA Valley. And in that game, ABC shot uh, a little bit under 32% from the floor. They committed 22 turnovers in the game. And I think it's safe to say, uh, if they want the win here tonight, I think they need to improve on both those numbers. I think if you're a Marauder fan, you'd like to see that field goal percentage at 35% or higher. And obviously the turnover is down, but if they can do that, uh, that's what they'll need. But LA Valley as a team, again, one of the stronger defensive units. In the entire 3C2A as Taylor will bring it in. Off to Cassell. Checked by Gravato. Jackson in the post, turnaround shot. That is pretty for Miracle Jackson. Little fade away, little Jordan fade. Right? On the elbow, that is, I mean, Brunia's on her, but what are you going to do? Forget the Jordan fade, that's the Quarter miracle Quarter three. <laughs> it really is. She deserves her own uh, her own name on that. Meanwhile, an offensive rebound and a chance for the Monarchs. Trailing by five. Heron open for three, around and out. Boy, halfway down, and Lopez has the rebound. Jordan Heron shoots 33% from long range. Jeff, I think at this point, if you're Coach Barry Green, you have to be happy with the smothering defense that the Marauders have played thus far, doing a really good job of not really allowing a lot of space outside of the Jerome three. It's a lone bucket on the ball. Lopez is three. Off to Taylor, and an offensive rebound now for the Marauders. In the first matchup between these two teams, it was LA Valley. Uh, that won the rebound battle. And ABC, generally speaking this season, has been a strong rebounding team, but they were out-rebounded by six. Meanwhile, there you see on the replay, Cassell fouled by Lena Vo. First foul on Vo, and here comes Bridget Ignacio. Meanwhile, Emily Brunia checking out for the Monarchs. And Princess Bird on for LA Valley. Five sophomores in the starting lineup for LA Valley. Princess Bird, one of just a couple of freshmen playing significant minutes this season for the Monarchs. And an interesting story about Bird that we'll get to momentarily. Ignacio from the wing, it's good. Bridget Ignacio off the bench, hits the triple. ABC pushes the lead to 11-3. Vo, inside to her own. Pressure from Jackson, open three. No good for Jeremio. Juliet Jeremio has come on as well. Well, Mike, I think the Marauders are content to see if LA Valley can beat them from outside. The looks they've had from three are fairly open. But I think Barry Green saying, if you can knock down those shots, we'll take our chances. Cassell in a crowd, forces one up, won't go. Jackson on the offensive glass, that shot no good. Might have been partially blocked. Here come the Monarchs on a two-on-two, two, looking for Bird. And the pass behind her and out of bounds, it's going to go back to Antelope Valley. Coming right at our camera operator, Matt Tindall. Matt knows how to get out of the way. He does. <laughs> Matt, Matt knows that all-important job of protecting the equipment. It's a fact. Ignacio at the top. And a whistle off the ball as Alyssa Taylor goes down. This one going to go against LA Valley. And another thing you have to be pleased with is the evolution of this team. And Alyssa Taylor has really come a long way. Uh, you know, comes in as a role player. Seemed a little timid earlier on in the season. She's really grown into her role, facilitating. Uh, and you have to really love her F effort on the boards, offensive and defensively throughout this season. And as the season has gone along. Yeah, Barry Green talked. Uh, uh, in very high praise about Alyssa Taylor. First thing he said about Alyssa Taylor is she does whatever we ask her to do. Bo leading the break, it's a three on two, all the way to the glass, but lays it up. Might have caught the bottom of the rim. And the ball off to the Marauders, so Bo 
had a lane. But gets the shot up a little late. And the Marauders back the other way, leading it by eight. Cassell with the step back three, off the back iron. Jeremio in a collision with Jackson. And that is quite fitting, because when we talked about Juliet Jeremio to Monica Hang, uh, well, you get a quick look at exactly what she does for this team. So she's the type of player, she'll come off the bench, uh, she'll throw her body around out there and really get after it, and that's the energy that she brings off the bench. And right away, you see her go right into uh, Miracle Jackson and get, give up her body to get that ball. Marauders uh, get away with one on that last possession. Vo was hacked by Lopez and didn't call it. Back on the other Maria's end. Maria's high arcing three, three, rims no good. Taylor. Off the rebound by Hart. Interesting that we haven't seen a shot from Courtney Hart yet. And then no sooner do I say that than Hart steps through, doesn't get the roll. On the lay-in up close, the ball's out of bounds. It's going to stay with Antelope Valley. But, you know, when we talk to Monica Hang, uh, of course she's going to talk about that our goal, we're going to come there and do what we do. We're going to play for 40 minutes. It's about what we do, um, whether or not uh, we're going to be successful and get a win here. But... The one name that she did mention was Courtney Hart, who had 24 points in the first matchup between these two teams. And they said that we've made some adjustments about what we're going to do with Courtney Hart in this one. We know we have to do more to try and at least contain her. 11-3, Antelope Valley. It's Marauder Basketball and SoCalCollegeSports.com. remaining in the first period. Antelope Valley with the 11-3 lead. And they have the basketball. Taylor will bring it in. Baseline right. Miller able to corral it. Alora Miller has checked in. Ignacio trying to feed down low, looking for Hart. The double team comes, and they get the steal. Jeremio passes on the three, gets it back. They work it around to Huron. Brunia, baseline jumper is short. Long rebound out to Lopez. But I think the thing you have to love here, Michael, if you're ABC, is that you've got this lead without getting a whole lot in terms of scoring from Hart or Lopez yet. Ignacio on the drive, blocking call. If it's on Vo, and it should be, that should be her second. Hey, you see her step in here Trying at the end. In. That's a great call. Yeah, I don't think there's much question. Ignacio will head to the line. It is the second on Lena Vo. Bridget Ignacio shoots 64% from the line. Both these teams, as a team, shoot under 60% from the line. Ignacio gets the roll on the second. I only mention that, Michael, as ABC in this first quarter, uh, now perfect at the line, six for six, en route to the 10-point lead. Well, you play good defense, you hit all your free throws, you're going to have a lot of good things happen in the win column. Heron at the controls. Looking like a 2-3 zone for the Marauders. Heron on the wing, puts it on the floor, back outside to Jeremio. Shot clock at 11. Brunia, who comes to LA Valley all the way from France. The step through from Provado, and Ignacio has the steal. Ahead to Lopez, she's one on three. 
Gonna pull it back out. Now finds Hart in the lane in an offensive foul. Princess Bird able to get there and draw the charge. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I, you can question the commitment of Princess Bird getting it Courtney Hart's way. That's true, and you know what? I just don't know if this is the right call here. You know, she's not set. She's she's literally forearm shoving Hart into the back. I don't know. A lot of contact. Hart on the other end. Crossover from Bird. No contact, no call, and the Marauders have it back. Ten-point lead in the ball. Bird looking for a foul there, but doesn't get it. Taylor around an Ignacio screen. Miller dancing on the dribble. Ignacio steps into a three, rimming no. Hard on the offensive glass, lays it up and in. So Courtney Hart with her first two points. 15-3. 9-0 run as Hiran will try to answer. That one caroms off. Brunia with the rebound. Bravado driving on Lopez, looking for Bird outside in the turnover. And the Monarchs decidedly out of sorts. Under a minute to go. They only have three points on the board this first quarter. As Nia Brown will come on. You know, Jeff, as the season closes here in 2023, this is a team that's on the precipice of a playoff berth. Likely going to be on the road, obviously. But, you know, hey, you get in, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, they are a team, as we talked about at the top, that seems to be gelling at the right time. Reach in foul on Brown. That'll be her first. Well, when you talk about the case for the postseason, uh, Mike, I think this would be a good win to make that case for the Marauders who come in uh, overall at uh, 12 and 11. Or, excuse me, 11, 11 and 12. 12. So they're going to be a team that, in the best case scenario, is going to be just barely over 500. So uh, they're going to have to make the RPI case. And this certainly would help with that as the Monarchs come in with a record of 16 and 7. 16 and 7, 8 and 1 in conference, and they are steamrolling the conference leader. One out of two for Hart. Long three for Jeremio, around and out, off to Miller. Wants to run under 30 seconds. Lopez for three. Won't go. Rebound off to Heron. Jeff, that's Down a great 20 sequence. Seconds. Provado driving on Taylor. The runner rims off. No good. The rebound to Ignacio. Two on two. Miller drives to the rim. Had it stripped on the way up. It's on the floor. And with five should, seconds, we've got a whistle. Should stay with the runners. Well, there you see Taylor. And getting in there against Brunia. In the corner, Miller down to four seconds. Hart into the lane, turnaround shot. No good, and the rebound off to Brown. But through one quarter, you can hardly draw it up any better if you're Barry Green and ABC. A 16-3 lead for the Marauders. You're watching Antelope Valley College basketball here on SoCalCollegeSports.com.
Well, Michael, I mentioned in the first quarter that the Marauders would likely need to improve on the just over 31% shooting from the floor that they had in the first matchup between these two teams if they wanted a better result tonight. Well, they shot 25% in the first quarter, and they lead it by 13. So, as I often say, what do I know? But uh, obviously for the Marauders, despite the uh, less than stellar shooting, uh, I think it certainly helps when uh, your opposition shoots 7% from the floor, as the Monarchs did. Meanwhile, a steal right away here to start the second quarter and a chance to extend on the lead. Yeah, what did they do for the free throw line, though? I mean, absolutely yeah, devastating. Seven. I will say in my defense that they only turned it over twice and that that is a substantial improvement from the first matchup between these two teams. Cassell, Taylor on the baseline, too strong. Off to Heron. Jordan Heron with all three points for LA Valley here in the first quarter. Bravado. Jeremio now Heron outside. Shot clock at 15. Jeremio steps in, fires from 12 feet and hits. Top Juliet shot. Juliet Jeremio. Average is just under five points a game. But that's a great job, Michael, of attacking the zone. Steps yep. through and gets inside that shell and has a good look from about 12 feet. Knocks it down. Yeah, good execution versus the zone. It wasn't an easy shot. She had Hart coming right at her. Here's Lopez. Stop back. Looked like might have been partially blocked, but Taylor gets on the offensive glass looking for a cutting Lopez. It's on the floor, and now the whistle comes in. And a timeout taken by L.A. Valley. Is that Brown down there and Check. able to get the timeout? Sorry, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, 8.35 to go here, 16-5. And timeout on the floor after the jump ball. Sorry, I just thought we were having an audio issue. I think we have a result. All right, sir. Well, we'll keep it here. Well, it'll be interesting to see here in this second period after a three-point first period. If Monica Hang and the L.A. Valley coaches can uh, find something that might work against this AVC defense that has been stifling so far. I mentioned the 7%, 1 of 15 from the floor for the Monarchs in that first quarter. Here on. It's by Jeremy and Provado can't save it. So another turnover. It really starts with the job that they've been able to do on Jordan Heron. Who again, does it all for this Monarch squad. Captain of this team and big time statistical leader. Hart can't get the layup to go, but Jackson gets on the offensive Travel. glass. She's fouled. Travel. Oh, nope, before the foul, she traveled. Turnover. A miracle Jackson continues to work the offensive glass. Outside to Provado. Talking about uh, Jordan Heron uh, carrying on the success uh, from high school. Where she won a state championship. She was conference player of the year at Bishop Alamany. And obviously brings that pedigree to this Monarch team as the captain. And they're going to need her here tonight. Already trailing it by 11. Brunia back outside. Shot clock at 10. Brown. Back outside, Brunia will hoist from three, too strong. Provado with the offensive rebound and a reach-in foul. The rebounds strongly in favor of ABC in the first period. They have an 18-10 edge on the boards as of now, and again, that reverses the trend of the first matchup between these two teams. Chief Quick one. feed inside to Brown. They lost Nia Brown, and she gets the layup. Sixteen seven, quick 4-0 run to get it back to nine. And Barry Green wants a timeout. 7.28 remaining here in the first half. The Marauders with the nine-point lead here on SoCalCollegeSports.com.
Columbus will bring it in. Foul line extended left. Getting it by nine. Jackson puts it on the floor against Brunia. Short on the layup, but Hart keeps it alive. Hart in a crowd, tied up, jump ball. Possession arrow favoring the Marauders. Boy, Jackson did everything right on that drive. But missed on the layup. Hart with the turnaround goes glass. Courtney Hart, who shoots 51% from the floor, puts her 25th in the state in field goal percentage. Jackie Provado knocks down the jumper from the top of the key. Is that a long two? Let's see what they score. It looked like a long two. 18-9. 18-9. Mentioned that just 30 players shooting better than 50% from the floor in the 3C2A so far this season. And Courtney Hart is one of them. She has been incredibly efficient all season long. And as she has stepped into a bigger role as this season has gone, so have the Marauders enjoyed more success in the win-loss columns. Turn around for Hart off the glass and good. Hart starting to feel it. Lead back to 11. Twenty to nine. The trap on Jeremio in the corner and a blocking call. This is going to be Lopez or Cassell. Looks like she just fell over. Yeah, I think both Lopez and Cassell were puzzled. That pass tipped and stolen. Taylor gets it ahead to Jackson. It's a two on one. Lopez from 10 feet. It's good. Transition basket for the Marauders. And Lopez, Michael, look at her use the fake. Yeah. Pretty strong. And the soft move. touch. 22 13. Jackson gets a hand and another steal. Open three. Lopez, no good. Gets her own rebound. Another chance, step back three, Lopez, this time she hits. Well, if at first she don't succeed. She's yeah, like, that do you know is, who I am? You know, do you know who I Lopez am? Get, Third in the state, I swear made I could, threes. I could feel it when she got that ball back. The thought was, well, I know what to do now. And the <laughs> second one was pure. And you had the feeling that when she got another chance, it said, she's not going to miss this one. And sure enough, she knocks it down. ABC with their largest lead at 16, 25 to nine. Cassell, on top. Lopez steps through, Cassell will try for three, splash! The Marauders on a roll. 12-0 run, the lead is 19. Timeout on the floor, all ABC. It's Marauder basketball on SoCalCollegeSports.com. Point lead for the Marauders. Lena Foe has returned playing with two fouls, steps through the double. She's fouled on the drive. She'll head to the line for a couple of free throws. So Monica Hang feels that she can wait no longer for the 19 point deficit. Comes back with Lena Voe, trying to find the right combination. They have been blitzed early by Antelope Valley. Bo misses on the first free throw. Lena Bo averaging just under 10 points a game. Shoots 49% from the line. Mentioned the two game winners for Lena Bo in the last about a week and a half, around and out on the second free throw, but she tracks down the rebound. 
But despite the recent game winners, as Huron opened for three in and out. Rebound fought for, no whistle. Now a late whistle comes in. It was Isabella Blum who has come on battling Miracle Jackson. But when I talk to Monica Hang, as the ball goes back to the Marauders, first thing she talked about was the defensive ability of Lena Vo. So that is what she has really brought to this team. 5-6, uh, but has that Carrie. long athletic frame, deceptive speed, and she is an outstanding one-on-one -on -one defender. They like to match her up whenever possible, the leading scorer from the other team. That'll be a tough assignment here tonight with Bo playing with two fouls. Three ball in and out again. Boy, that's a pretty good look for Del Castillo. And it's been that kind of first half for LA Valley. You've got uh, a very confident team playing well in ABC. And the Monarchs are not getting a whole lot of rolls either. Good feed inside to Jackson, second effort, no. And the rebound on the floor to Huron. And right now, the Monarchs maybe just trying to get to halftime. Bravado shot off the back iron and off to Lopez. Lopez now with six rebounds to go along with seven points. Nice find. Backdoor cut for Lopez. What a good rotation. Shot clock at 15. Bravado reaches in and has the steal. Jackie Bravado over the timeline. The Marauders are back. Vo on the baseline as that one stripped but regains. Del Castillo will try again and hit. Diani Del Castillo with the three. That breaks the 12-0 run. But the A.V. Slee lead is 16. Jackson between the circles. Cassell driving on Vo. Goes glass. The runner is good for Bailey Cassell. And there I think you see that's not only great execution by Cassell, but Vo clearly aware of the situation with two fouls. Del Castillo's three, no good. The rebound off to Taylor. Taylor into the front court and a blocking call, and that is going to go on Lena Vo. So moments ago she avoids that third foul, but then, uh, Michael, I think something of a careless foul there against Alyssa Taylor about 25 feet out. For third. And that'll bring on Nia Brown, along with Julia Jeremio. So Privado, along with Huron, Brown, Del Castillo, and Jeremio on the floor for LA Valley off of Cassell and out of bounds. Jeff Meanwhile, Miller, Cassell, Lopez, uh, Hart, and Ignacio on the floor right now for ABC. Sorry, Michael. It's a great move here by Coach Green, taking out Miracle Jackson. She has two fouls. They have a nice cushy lead here. Let's see if they can hold the lead. Hart back in the contest along with Cassell, Lopez, Ignacio, and Miller. Brown at the top of the key. Del Castillo pops Gosh, from 15 and hits. When you talk about Deani Del Castillo wanting to uh, improve the all-around game, that's a good example of the kind of thing that they were working on uh, last year with Glendale. Again, uh, used more as a sharpshooter from outside, but uh, moves like that, I think, are what Gianni Del Castillo had in mind as she looks at possibly uh, continuing her career at the next level. Lopez is three rims, no good. Hart with the offensive rebound. The follow is good. Rebound off to Heron. That's a carry. Good look for Hart, but couldn't get the follow to go. Jeremio's three. Rims off. Miller has the rebound. Three on four. Cassell fakes the three. On the baseline to Ignacio. Cassell sets for three and a travel. So the wave off the shot with 127 remaining in the first half. Yeah. Well, what do you see there, Michael? A little bit with the uh, left foot there? Well, she comes down here, and then she comes up. Uh, does she? No, she holds it. Uh, it. It looked like she hopped, and the referee's not looking at her feet. He's just looking at her in the periphery. 
That shot goes up there, but in the periphery, when you see that hop and you're not looking at the feet, you're going to miss that call, and that's exactly what happened. She hopped in, and it looked like her, he thought the left foot was the pivot, but that was not the pivot foot. The pivot foot was the right foot. She keeps that on the ground, and she buries the three to add insult to injury, or insult to the foul, or to the fraction foul. Heron has been held to just three points. He'll try from long range, back iron. Long rebound to Del Castillo. Nice hands by Bailey. Heron has that one poked free. Monarchs will keep close. it. Jeremio on the drive. High archer. Rims no good. Off to Miller. Another rebound for Alora Miller. Nice. Outside, Lopez finds hard on the cut. Can't get the roll. I mean, that is textbook. In that secondary break story, you go outside in, find a wide open layup. Hart just can't convert. Boy, Hart with the effort to run the floor and gets the look in close, but doesn't get the roll. Jeremiah with the baseline jumper, rimming no. Nia Brown with the rebound, another chance for the Monarchs. Provado for three, it's good. I think the Marauders right Jackie now a little Provado. tired. And I think if it goes Barry Green, you strongly think about taking a timeout. Down to 17 seconds. Now seven seconds, excuse me. Cassell on the drive, tries to drop it for Hart. A turnover with 2.7 remaining. Well, ABC led by 13 after one. They've got a 13-point lead. So they've held serve here in the second to maintain the lead. Heron just inside half court. Let's go. No good. <laughs> Pretty good look. Maybe one of the better looks for Heron here in the first half, even though it came from outside Steph Curry range. Man. Halftime from Lancaster and ABC with a 30-17 lead over LA Valley here on SoCalCollegeSports.com. We started the Community Athletic Project back in 2018, and it was a way for us to give back to the community, of the young people of the community. Is, is this golf tournament gives us an opportunity to, to say thank you to everybody, to say thank you for being a part of this. Let's get out and have a good time playing some golf and, and, and have fun and enjoy ourselves and have a, a communal opportunity to say thank you. And we got some perfect weather for it. Today. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, the, last year we had 115 degrees, this year we're at you know, 80 and it's, it's beautiful and nice little breeze.
So I was just beginning uh, junior high and high school when Title IX came about. And I remember the opportunities for my brother, my older brother, but there were no opportunities for my sister and I outside of school. In those days, we went and changed into these ridiculous one-piece one uh, shorts outfits if you were a girl. I remember we wore the jumpsuits. We didn't really feel like athletics. Every decision that we make as administrators, we have to look at it through the lens of Title IX. I think that um, we have to see how does it affect other programs, our student athletes, and how, how we are providing access and opportunities for our student athletes. You see a lot of athletes, male and female, who haven't yet peaked when they're in high school. You know, they may have been doing soccer, either at school, club soccer, whatever it is, whatever sport it is. They may not be good enough to have been recruited right into a D1, 2, or 3 school. They still want to compete. They may or may not think they have an opportunity to go to a four-year after that. But what they know is that athletics is really important to them and they want one last chance. We don't ever want to go backwards. We want to get better and better and better. And I would say as we improve women's athletics, you're also going to improve men's. There's always room for improvement in everything we do. So if you improve one, the other one's going to come along too. I look back now and realize that I didn't have the opportunities. Back then, I didn't know any better. I knew it was coming, and I remember back then, we talked about it as equal rights. I didn't know that I was supposed to have those opportunities. I was just frustrated that my brother got to do it, and I didn't. It's just amazing, but I think this 50th anniversary has given us an opportunity to celebrate and to know that our female coaches can figure out how to be mothers, how to live lives, and how to be successful coaches. And they're now the role models to those student athletes. We started the Community Athletic Project back in 2018, and it was a way for us to give back to the community, the young people of the community. This golf tournament is, is this golf tournament gives us an opportunity to, to say thank you to everybody, to say thank you for being a part of this. Let's get out and have a good time playing some golf and, 
and, and have fun and enjoy ourselves and have a, a communal opportunity to say thank you. And we got some perfect weather for it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, the, last year we had 115 degrees. This year we're at you know 80, and it's it's beautiful and nice little breeze.
Start of the third quarter here from Lancaster. It's been all Marauders here in the first half, 30 to 17. LA Valley yeah, with an 8-1 point. record. Sorry, Story. I was going to say, Michael, yep, yeah, a 13-point lead at the end of one, and they held the lead into the second quarter as Hart gets things going in the third quarter with the layup and the lead now 15. Heron, who had just three points in the first half, the leading scorer for LA Valley. That pass tipped and stolen by Hart. So an immediate turnover. And the Marauders with a chance to extend on the lead. Courtney Hart led the way for AVC with nine points in the first half, seven for Cassell, seven for Lopez. So the big three for AVC continuing to lead the way. Taylor with the drive to the glass, had that one blocked by Brunia. Mentioned Brunia coming to LA Valley all the way from France. Looking to make the trek to the United States to play basketball and go to school, but she was very much looking to uh, get herself into a program. That's a great job LA by Valley. Taylor. Yep, Taylor anticipating and again hits the deck. Barry Green talked about how tough she is. And it has been all year as she stepped into a bigger role with the departure of Jordan Johnson. And she's replaced by Alara Miller. Just finishing the point on Emily Brunia. Uh, Brunia coming off the bench early in the season but moved into the starting lineup for LA Valley and Monica Hang said that was really the missing piece. When Emily Brunia came into the lineup, uh, she was just a positive player who gets after it, uh, really fills a lot of uh, roles beyond stats for this team, and that really brought everything together. High Urker from Lopez, no good. The rebound out of bounds, and it will belong, well, it looks like to Antelope Valley. Lopez was shooting this the entire way. That's not a bad look. Yep, indeed, that is off of Pravado. Meanwhile, Hart wide open as Heron goes down, put the layup around and out. The rebound to Miller, another chance for ABC. Lopez, 4-3. Can't, can't lose that one. Third chance points for Antelope Valley. A 5-0 run to start the second half. The lead, 18. Their largest is 19. That one tipped and stolen by Lopez. It's a two on one. Jackson with the layup. And ABC has their largest lead at 20 as Jackson runs the floor off the steal by Lopez. 37-17, Del Castillo outside to Brunia, gets it back. Working on Hart. Foul line jumper from Vo around and out. Off to Cassell. Bravado bringing some pressure. Off to Lopez. Around to Jackson's screen for a three. Rimming no. Rebound off to Brunia. In the corner, Del Castillo open three. Won't go. Long rebound out to Jackie Bravado. Another chance this time for LA Valley. Chip, I thought Del Castillo really hopped into that last one. Similar to what we saw from Bailey in the first half when she was called for a travel. Vo tips the rebound out to herself. Hiran on the drive, passes out of the triple team. Brunia will try for three. Another travel. offensive rebound. <laughs> well, the crowd agrees with you. We can hear it from here. <laughs> Vo with the floater. Rimming, no good, off to Brunia. Another chance for LA Valley. It's about four offensive rebounds on this set. Now Pravado will try and hit. Jackie Pravado with a lifeline for LA Valley down 20. And now it's 17 after Pravado hits the three. She's got eight to lead the Monarchs. Lopez around to Jackson screen. Hart in a crowd outside. Lopez open, three splash. What an answer. Well, that's a good feed, good recognition from Courtney Hart. They bring the triple team, yep. and she finds Lopez. 
Meanwhile, Del Castillo underneath lays it in. How about the feet and the platform from Lopez? The reason why she's one of the top shooters in the state. She's got 13 to lead all scorers. Three of nine from three in the game. There's a heads up timeout. Timeout on the floor. 5.32 remaining in the third quarter. It's a 30-second timeout. And AVC with an 18-point lead. And, and Mike, they grabbed the lead with a big run early in that first quarter, and they just haven't let go. Yeah, well, ABC doing a pretty good job here in this third quarter offensively, but LA Valley starting to find their footing offensively, and uh, how much energy have you spent getting out of the gate here if you're ABC? And I think Coach Barry Green recognized that wants to slow things down. Let's run some offense and see if we can get some, some better shots and not expend so much energy. Mentioned that Jordan Huron, the leading scorer, has just three points on one of four shooting. You go back to the first matchup between these two teams, and Huron had just 11 points in that game, a win for L.A. Valley. But she finished with 11 points and 10 assists. So clearly the Marauders uh, doing a pretty good job defending Jordan Huron. Cassell leans over the dribble. Picked up by Del wow. Castillo. Corner three for Ignacio off the side of the board. And Del Castillo has the rebound. Up top, Del Castillo for three. The rim on nine, and the ball on the floor. And the jump ball, and the possession arrow favoring L.A. Valley. Brunia takes possession and then rolls on her back. I mean, that's by the rule, that's a travel. Jordan Huron will bring it in. Outside, Provado, 4-3. No good, the rebound off to Jackson. Excuse me, off Nia to Nia Williams. Williams. Williams saw a short stint in the first half back on the floor. Midway through the third, Vo on Taylor. Jeff, this is a dangerous Nina Vo time. playing with three fouls. Go ahead, Michael. Dangerous time for AVC. Their shot selection, specifically on this possession for Bailey Cassell, not great. And LA Valley has been getting looks that they normally make. Some wide open three point looks. She hit a few of those in a row. This can be a whole nother ball game. And ABC in the driver's seat right now, but that could change very quickly. There you go. Heron's three is good from way downtown. Jordan Heron now with six. Back to a 15 point game as Taylor. Gets it over the timeline. No spacing here. Cassell on the drive, goes to the left hand. That is pretty for Bailey Cassell. Turns a corner, a lot of steam, great finish. Cassell struggled from the floor in the win Ugh. against West LA. A turnover in the backcourt, Vo lays it in. Careless. 15-point game. I mentioned Cassell just 2 of 12 from the floor in the win over West L.A., but she's bounced back here tonight with nine points. Lopez, three, around and out, and the rebound off to Williams. Another chance, but that pass up over the head of Cassell, and the turnover will give it back to the Monarchs with 3.36 remaining in the third. Juliet Jeremio going to check in and replace Lena Vo. Courtney Hart returns for Nia Williams. Well, no, Jeremio is going to replace uh, Brunia, and Vo will remain in the game. They bring the trap with Cassell up top now for the Marauders. Jeremio. Finds Vo on the baseline. Nice closeout by Bailey. Shot clock at 12. Provado open for three. Long rebound. Vo tries to keep it alive, but saves it to Hart. That's a terrific and defensive ABC set. ABC has the ball. Ignacio will try for three. Over the back. It's going to go against Lopez. For Lopez, it'll be her second foul. 
Del Castillo and Vo each with three fouls. No foul trouble to speak of for ABC right now. Late in the third. You know, a further review, that's a tough call to go against Lopez because Lopez really has the offensive player not boxing her out. Travel. Shot clock at 19. Vo on the drive. Heron fakes on Taylor, but a good closeout from Hartel. Castillo will try for three and hit. Well, it's potentially a big no call. Thought we might have seen a travel on Vo. No call, but Del Castillo makes him pay, hitting the three. 12 point lead for AVC. Well, this is as close as the Marauders have been since, or I should say the Monarchs have been since very early in the second quarter. Back iron for Cassell. Find Chance the to creep a little closer. Jeremio, Vo. As that one tipped and a double dribble. Well, finally a turnover on LA Valley. Well, at least they whistled, they whistled for something. Down to two minutes to go in the third. Opportunity missed for the Monarchs as they had the stop and a chance to perhaps even get it down to single digits. Oh, that's a defensive foul. That's going to go against Pravado on the screen by Alyssa Taylor. So for Provado, that will be her second foul. And Alyssa Taylor will bring it in. 151 remaining in the third. Ignacio checked by Jeremia. Hart, they quickly bring the double team, spins into the lane, off the back iron. Down goes Taylor, no call on the rebound. Two on one the other way. Vo in from the right and gets the roll. Lena Vo. On the break, LA Valley back within 10. 19 to 12 the, run here in the third. Yeah, I was going to say 10 2 after it was 40 to 22 on the ABC timeout. Ignacio. Great back door. Finds a cutting Lopez. And Lopez with the layup. That. Stops the run for the moment. Gets ABC back out to a 12-point cushion. And a turnover now for Pravado as she nice. loses the handle. Nice hands from Ignacio. Under a minute to go. Taylor checked by Vo. Trying to get it to Lopez, and they find her. Picked up by Vo in a switch. Cassell driving on Pravado. Short with the runner. Rebound off to Haran. Vo leaking out, but missed the layup. Lena Vo went to the left hand and talk about opportunities missed. Vo on the breakaway. Too strong with the layup. And the Marauders maintain the 12 point lead. Now looking to extend off the back iron for Lopez. Taylor has it. Look at Taylor. Down to 10 on the seconds. Ignacio. Gets a screen from Cassell. Hart with great position down low. Turn around off the glass is good for Courtney Hart. Hart into double figures. And the Marauders close the third quarter on a quick 4-0 run to push it to 14 as we move to the fourth from Lancaster here on SoCalCollegeSports.com. I look back now and realize that I didn't have the opportunities. Back then, I didn't know any better. I knew it was coming, and I remember back then, we talked about it as equal rights. I didn't know that I was supposed to have those opportunities. I was just frustrated that my brother got to do it, and I didn't. It's just amazing, but I think this 50th anniversary has given us an opportunity to celebrate and to know that our female coaches can figure out how to be mothers, how to live lives, and how to be successful coaches. And they're now the role models to their student athletes.
Well, Mike, that final minute of the third quarter was maybe as significant a minute as there has been in that in this game. As a couple of opportunities for the Monarchs to maybe get it into single digits going into the fourth, but they miss on those chances. The Marauders on the other end convert with a couple of big shots, and they'll carry a 14-point lead into the fourth. Pressure in the backcourt and a steal for Pravado. Two on two, Pravado from 12 feet, hits the jumper. Quick turnover. And the lead 12, Jackson working against the pressure of Heron. Has that one stripped and stolen by Heron. Score here, you can see a timeout. Three on two, Pravado on the baseline, that's good. Jackie Pravado with a couple of quick buckets. And it's a 10-point game, and indeed, Barry Green's going to burn a timeout here on the Marauder sideline. A couple of shaky, shaky transitions here. Uh, and offensively, just did not look good. Out of sorts. That's a quick 4-0 run to open the fourth. And L.A. Valley with a little bit of momentum. ABC, eh, maybe in a little bit of trouble here. And going back to the first matchup between these two teams, and it was Jackie Pravado leading L.A. Valley in that game as well as the pressure nearly does now force a turnover. That went out of bounds off of ABC. So yeah, in thought... many ways, history repeating itself in this matchup. As Pravado again leads the way in the scorebook for L.A. Valley. Now up to 12 in the game. Del Castillo. Bravado nice guarded by Lopez. Off to Vo. Taylor on her. Jeremio will try for a three. Rimming no. Rebound off to Lopez. Kristen Lopez closing in on a double-double. 15 points, nine rebounds, four assists. Jackson finds Lopez. Shot clock at nine. Nice. Cassell down oh. to Jackson on the give and go. Missed on the layup. Great feed. Bo has the rebound looking for Heron, but Lopez gets a hand in. I undersold Kristen Lopez moments ago. Stats update. She does have the double-double. 15 points, 10 rebounds, four assists. Big performance for Lopez Love in it. this one. Outside Del Castillo open for three off the front iron. Jeff, that's a wide-open three for a player that yeah. has buried a few of them in this one and saw some easy misses in that third quarter. And you know, Those are probably shots that went in the game at L.A. Valley that we didn't see here, and that's why we still have a 10-point lead on the board for ABC, but they got to be careful. Another steal. ABC with a spate of turnovers here to start the fourth quarter as Heron to the rim. Can't get it to go with the left hand, and Taylor has the board. Oh. Yeah, Mike, in many ways, and Heron with another steal. Taps that one free. She'll try for three, and it's good. Now it's a seven-point game. The pressure giving the Marauders some trouble. And Heron, who has been magnificent all season on the offensive end, making a big contribution here defensively with three steals that I can remember already in the fourth quarter. That's tough here. T tough stretch for Alyssa Taylor, who has turned the ball over a few times to open the fourth. She'll be subbed in for Miller on, Hart on. Here, off comes Miracle Jackson. So they keep Ignacio out there, an extra ball handler. And to Lopez. They bring the trap. Miller drives the lane. Runner too strong, but a whistle and a foul called. And Laura Miller going to be heading to the line for a couple of free throws. It's a great job by Miller. Good recognition. Hey, you're not going to stop me. I'll just go put the pressure on the referee to make a call, and they do. Such a temptation, especially when things starting to slip away, uh, to be less than aggressive against the pressure, but sometimes the best move is to go right at it. 
as Miller did there and get herself to the line. The men getting ready to square off in our next game of our doubleheader here this evening from Lancaster. Miller gets the roll. 47-39. An eight-point lead for Antelope Valley. Jeremio. Outside Del Castillo. Open for three. Around and out. And the rebound off to Provado. And you have to feel travel. like Mike, the Marauders. And that time, Vo with the travel. But Mike, you have the decided feeling almost from the outset that the Marauders are living a little bit dangerously on the defensive end. This is a wide open look for yeah. Del Castillo previous to the travel that we yes. see there on Lena Vo. But Del Castillo, you can hardly have a better look from long range. Hart against the double team. Oh. Trying to keep it alive, but Jeremio ultimately wins it for LA, uh, for LA Valley. Excuse me. Heron at the top. Again, they bring the pressure at the top with Cassell near Steele. Jeremio from the three out front and a late whistle and a foul going to go against Cassell. And for Cassell, that's her third. Got on the arm right there. That's, Jeremio that's the who call. shoots 50% from the line. Hits the first free throw. Well, this lead is down to seven, and if you're a Marauder fan, 654, that's an eternity that's right. right now to hold on against the conference leaders in L.A. Valley. Coming in, having won their last six and ten of their last 11. And Jeremio coolly drains all three. And now the Monarchs within five. This is as close as they have been since early in the first quarter. Ignacio hands off to Lopez. Vo pressuring her. Provado nearly got there for the steal. Shot clock at 12. Cassell all the drive finds Ignacio. Ignacio into the lane. Half hook. Gets the roll. Bridget Ignacio. That's a big bucket. Huge. Great touch. Good feet. Oh, on the other end. An answer back for L.A. Valley, back to a five-point game. Yeah, Going back to the bucket by Ignacio, that is also exactly what Barry Green would like to see for Bridget Ignacio, looking for an opportunity to be a scorer. As he talked about, Ignacio said she's got all the tools to be a terrific offensive player, just needs to be a little more aggressive. Lopez, 4-3. That was set up on the fly by Coach Green. Watch this movement here. Let's go inside, wide open, draw the defense. And if you're LA Valley, you're just gonna have to you just have to live with that down low. You gotta stay on the shooter. Now it's Provado who will try to answer. Nice Long box out. and off to Ignacio. The lead is eight. Cassell on the drive. And a whistle and a foul called on Provado. It will be her third as Cassell will head to the line. Look like you're on. Who did they ultimately call it on? No, I think they got Provado with a push. Yeah, they're going to get... They're going to get... That's a tough call. So Cassell heads to the line. She shoots 61%. Timeout on the floor. Marauders leading it by eight here on SoCalCollegeSports.com.
Kaylee Cassell readies herself at the line. After LA Valley crept back within five, Cassell missing on the first. Marauders looking for some breathing room. One more coming for Cassell. 61% foul shooter, second one in the air and in the basket. And a nine point lead for ABC. Heron up to 11 in the game. And now Jackson up top in this 1 3 1 trap. And she is so disruptive at the top. Keep an eye on Jackson. Del Castillo for our three. Too strong. Offensive rebound for Jeremio and a foul called. Just a lucky bounce. And Provado battling Jackson. Might have gotten a hand to keep that one alive and ends up with Jeremio. Back to the line for a couple of free throws. And Jeremio. And Mike, you know, we see this, it's a small sample size, but 50% from the line, but that's four in a row, and she looks pretty comfortable out there. She does, good rhythm. And bang, five in a row. Bang another one. Yeah, she can shoot. That's a deceptive number. Probably a small yeah, sample size. Yeah, I think size, the sample size yeah. is three of six on the season, so she's improving on that number with five in a row. Here in the fourth quarter, they lobbed a heart down low. She's fouled. There's nobody that go can against stop Del Castillo. Her. If you're gonna, if she has anybody on her back, you need to go. She just clears so much. That's gonna be on Vo. Okay. Yeah, that's her. Fourth. So Vo with her fourth foul. Hart again in the first matchup between these two teams had 24 points to go along with seven rebounds. That far and away led all scorers in the matchup, and that's why Monica Hang mentioned her specifically and said she was a player against whom we needed to make some adjustments as we get ready for the second matchup hart with 12. Rushed one it. more coming in and out rebound off to nia brown eight point game Bo playing with four fouls and jackson steps in front for the steal Again, Miracle Jackson, such a weapon at the top of that 1-3-1 trap. Comes up with the steal. Too high for Lopez, but able to keep it alive. Finds Jackson, stripped by Heron. Boy, good hands from Jordan Heron. Travel. So it's the double team. Oh, there's the travel for sure. That's a tough break if you're LA Valley, because I think Heron's trying to get the pass ready here and just loses the handle right yep. there. And she knows it as can't find the handle to make the pass. Drags that pivot foot. There's the travel, and ABC gets it back, leading by eight. They're clear out. LA Valley now with 15 turnovers in the game. And Low Valley with 16. Eight-point lead. Give it to her. For ABC. Uh, give it to her. Uh, over the top, had her. From the corner, long rebound, it's on the floor. Brown wants to run, it's a two on one. Don't Brown needs to fight Good. Brunia, but instead she goes coast to coast. No foul call, but Brunia cleans it up. Oh. Again, a timeout turnover. on the floor. No, it's a turnover. Okay. So Miracle was gonna give off to Kristen Lopez, who had not established out of bounds. So Lopez touches it while she had one foot inbound, one foot out of bounds. It's out of bounds, it's a turnover. And now Monarch ball again, down by six. And in the two three, you Chance have to, make to it keep a an one eye score out game. Oh. Jeremio will try to make it a one score game and does as Jeremio connects from long range and LA Valley back within three. 334 and counting remaining in the game. Cassell drives the lane out to Jackson. Jackson nearly traveled oh, and did. did. Trying to keep that pivot foot. And right now, Michael, the ABC spool is unwinding just a bit. Does Barry Green need to think about a timeout? I think he does. I think if you see a score here, they're going to have to regroup. Need to get active defensively. Uh, that's a travel. Jeremio steps in, air ball from 18, and the rebound off to Jackson. 
So the Marauders get it back, that's leading an, by that's three. An offensive foul. Offensive foul on Hart, working against Heron. And Heron. Who has had, Mike, I think nothing less than a sensational defensive fourth quarter. She has, and she was waiting for it too. You go back to the replay and you see it right there. Heron just put her foot in the ground, and she was ready. Heron. Oh. With Jackson on her hip, Del Castillo off the back iron, but will corral the long rebound. Miracle. Jackson gets a hand in, she's got the steal. Foul. In on Heron, who commits the foul. Where's the foul? Are they no, going to say no foul? Bounds. Wow. No, no foul here. Well, Heron, I would say, got away with one. Antelope Valley will keep the basketball. That's right there. Contact uh, no. on the arm. Uh, but, but no, uh, the, the, uh, the inside arm. That, that's contact. That's a foul. I'll be very honest with you, Mike. At my looking at the second look with the advantage of the super slow motion there, uh, that was a closer call than I thought. So I'll, I'll deviate from you slightly here and uh, say I'm uh, a little bit closer on that one. Either way, the Marauders have the basketball. Hart in the lane, turnaround shot is good. So Great they job. go to Courtney Hart, who's got 14. Big bucket for ABC. Jackson, near steal, long three, rimming no. Brown on the offensive glass, the follow is good. Boy, Nia Brown has really given LA Valley some nice minutes off the bench. That's six rebounds to go along with four points. 56-53. Both these teams pretty reliant on the starting five. So when they can get some production off the bench, that is big. Hart passes out of the double team. Jackson puts it on the foul. floor. And a foul, foul called two free on throws. Del Castillo. So a couple of free throws coming for Miracle Jackson. It, it, it should be two free throws coming. They are in the penalty. Still, I, I, I do want to go back to that no foul call. On. There, there, there's contact there. There's con She fouls her twice. There's one, hits her on the forearm, and then gets a little bit of the ball there. Oh, you say with the, with the left arm. Yes, so the is left she fouling arm, she hits even with before that. Arm. Yes. Hits her with the le left arm, and it was clear, very clear, okay. that there was a foul before I thought we were, uh, contact was made on the ball. I thought we were going to go into white man can't jump, and you're going to tell me that hand is part of the ball. Well, I, and, and the wrist I, I could expand the, on that reference, but I can't because it's not it's not PG rated. <laughs> Various Jackson. bones connected to well, I'll right. stop there. Ready's ready's the free throw. Uh, Up and no good. She has to she Jackson. has to hold the follow through. You see her just stepping off of the line, and it went short. She shoots 49% from the line. Big free throw coming, under two minutes to go for Miracle Jackson. There you go. Freshman with the second free throw. 57-53, four-point game. Vo finds Heron for three. Long rebound, Provado wow. trying to keep it alive and does save it to Del Castillo. Great hustle for Jackie Provado. And now Provado open for three, no good. Ignacio trying to keep it alive. Jeremio's follow rolls off, and the rebound to Jackson. Three looks, and now Jackson throws it away in the backcourt. And another opportunity coming for LA Valley down to 119 to go. You know, in a quick moment there, Courtney Hart goes right over to Jackson after that one, gives her the pat on the backside. No doubt encouraging her, and that is very much Courtney Hart and her role on this team. Extremely positive as a leader of this team. She's a leader. Jeremio steps through the double team, loses the handle. Cassell has the steal, and a whistle comes in on the far side. Fouled in the backcourt. It's going to be free throws for Cassell. Jeff, you talk about the evolution of this team. 
now 6-3 and three in conference, coming into this matchup, dominated the first half versus L.A. Valley. You get that really bad turnover from Miracle, and then they just respond with a defensive possession like this. Active hands, let's get the steal, force a foul, and now two free throws coming to Bailey Cassell. And perhaps, Michael, right on point, as you watch that replay, who got a hand in there? Miracle Jackson. Yep, exactly who right. Who stayed in it and got back to it and makes a play to get the ball back Story, and those get are, Cassell to the line. Those are, those are moments where you can easily fold and just completely become disengaged. And Coach Barry Green, this staff, has his team bought in. And you see them down the stretch here really looking to finish the Monarchs. 68 seconds away from getting all the way back to 500. And again, this is the kind of win that's going to show up in the RPI. And AVC, it's not going to be a hugely impressive record on paper. But uh, again, making a stronger case if they can keep it going in a very tough Western State Conference. Uh, if they can continue to put together the wins, uh, this might be a team that you see coming to your building uh, for an opening round uh, postseason matchup. And uh, this could be a tough matchup. Yeah, Stoney, this is not a team you want to see in the playoffs, uh, particularly with how they're able to get after it defensively. Uh, you saw that in the first half. If they can sustain stuff like that, if they can sustain pressure, they're, they become a very yep. hard team to deal with. But at the same time, they also have shooters, and they have a post presence who is a big yep. handful to deal with down low. Yeah, they have that advantage of Courtney Hart, who makes a defense react. And then you have players uh, like Lopez, uh, like Cassell, who could knock down shots uh, from long range. That is a uh, recipe for success offensively. Yeah, they make the scoreboard and react. 59-53. Still working here, though, with a six-point lead. A lot of time. Vo outside to Jeremia. Here on. Off to Brunia, who will try for a three and hit. Barely moves the net. Emily Brunia. Well, hold everything. Still a three-point game. Taylor over the line. Mike, I got to tell you, I think that ABC catches Travel. a little break there that LA Valley drops off on the pressure. Huh? They get the turnover ultimately That's anyway, but I think the pressure really giving ABC a lot of trouble. Well, T Taylor had an issue earlier in this half with turning the ball over. She turns it over right there. A very inopportune ta time in LA Valley with a chance to tie it with a three. Just saw the three from Brunia. That's the seventh assist in the game for Heron, who is so dangerous with the basketball, not only scoring uh -huh. herself, but finding players open. Jeremio ties it with 34.2 remaining. All the way back from a 20-point deficit at one point. Jackson over the line. Finds Hart. Offense. Hart in from the right offensive foul. 20.5, and now L.A. Valley can look for the win here in regulation. She's not set. That's a bad call. That's a bad call, Jeff. And it's a bad call for this reason. The defender, look at her feet. She's not set. She's not at the spot. She's moving, she's moving her foot here. Moving her foot. Now you see the extension. Ah, such a bang-bang call. Yeah, it's interesting. We'll never really know if that call is about the position of Jordan Heron or is it about that left arm extension uh, from I, Courtney Hart and what ultimately draws the call. I think you can justify uh, I think you, a call I think you sum it up way. nicely with, yeah, you sum it up nicely with a, a bang, bang call. Obviously, that's one that has to be made uh, right there in the moment. She's shuffling. She, but it's she's a, shuffling her feet here, Stoy. I'm gonna take the graphic down to be able to better see it. But she's still moving. But you see the extension there, and that extension, as she keeps the forearm inside, and doesn't extend. I think Jerron's still going down just because of the contact. But man, it is the second foul on Courtney Hart, and boy, a minute eight remaining in this one, and it's a six-point lead for ABC but back-to-back -back threes for L.A. Valley, and they get the turnover, and now they've got a chance to win it in regulation. They've gone to overtime in two of their last three games. Have the Monarchs staring down the possibility of overtime again. 
And Mike, you got to rebound here on a shot. Have to. Here on, down to seven seconds, working on Jackson. Tries to pass it back out. Jackson with the near steal. Travel. They get it to Brunia. Brunia for three, no good. We are heading to overtime. They keep it alive. And that's good recognition of the situation as well there from Ignacio and Cassell. They know the time is running down. LA Valley doesn't have the luxury of making any extra passes. And they're able to contest that shot. Ultimately a leaner from way downtown for Brunia. Won't go and we're heading to overtime. And again, uh, this might be advantage LA Valley uh, who has played a spate of close games of late, including two overtime games in their last three. And now the Marauders have to regroup after they let this one really slip away in regulation. They've led throughout. They had the six-point lead with just over a minute left. And can they get it back together and close out the win against a Monarch team that just won't go away? Heading to overtime from Lancaster, it's Marauder Basketball and SoCalCollegeSports.com. One story to update, Diani Del Castillo did foul out in that final minute. So LA Valley loses Del Castillo for the overtime period. Tap one by AVC. High drama in a very tight Western State Conference. And this one has conference championship implications. Good cut from Jackson and a good feed from Hart. Great find. Well, Barry Green characterized Jackson as an opportunistic Man. scorer. And that's exactly what she did there. Answer from Brunia, who hit a big three in the final minute of regulation to pull the Monarchs within three and gives them the lead. And a turnover in the backcourt for the Marauders. And the Monarchs have it back, leading by one. Lena Vo on the floor with four fouls. Bailey Cassell playing with four fouls for ABC. That's the third foul on Courtney Hart, incidentally. On the previous turnover. They're on. Jeremio, who hit the big three to tie it with 20 seconds remaining in regulation. Heron open for three. It's short and out of bounds back to AVC. Well, pretty good game one of our doubleheader here tonight. It's going to be tough to top, but I think uh, both teams evenly matched here in the, in the nightcap. Ignacio with Jackson, Cassell, Lopez, and Hart on the floor for AVC. Cassell over the timeline. Now Provado will back off. Shot clock at 17. Picked up by Vo in a switch. Cassell goes to the left-handed runner. Hart taps the rebound to herself and lays it in. Courtney Hart with the follow, giving the Marauders the lead. Top shot. Provado stops and pops over Hart. For the bucket, 64-63. The Monarchs back out in front. Cassell between the circles. Still dancing on the dribble into the lane. Double team comes Hart on the baseline. Off the back iron, Vo with the rebound. Monarchs looking to extend on the lead. Under three minutes to go. Jeremio 
Looking for the corner. What a steal by Ignacio. And gets the timeout. Well, did she call the timeout? What was the call, Michael? Not sure. Looked like they signaled timeout, but now they're just going to give it oh, she, to ABC. She, she, on she the, oh, she was it. able to yep. Yep, throw it off of Provado. Well, that's a heady play that saves a timeout if you're ABC. Even better from Ignacio. Is that a that's even better? Great pass. Indeed it is. Hart, triple team down low, but gets the layup. AVC back out in front, 220 and counting. Foe tries to feed it outside, but Lopez steps in front for the steal. They bring the trap. Cassell will hold. Marauder's going to run some time. Uh, that's a great find. Oh, that's good anticipation. Lena Vo Turn reads over. the pass, tries oh. to lead Brunia, but turns it over. You, you have to be a little bit more heady than that. I, I think Ignacio uh, got a little mechanical, telegraphed the pass, and Vo did a great job stepping in front of it, but unfortunately for the Monarchs, turns it over on the other end. So. ABC well, it's clear that lead. the adjustment for L.A. Valley is to sag down on Courtney Hart. They are going with two defenders they need to, to go guard early. against that entry pass. Keep an eye on Vo. Now they get it to Hart. That's a great feed. The turnaround around and out. How did that stay out? And it's going back to L.A. Valley as Hart commits the foul in the backcourt. Boy, that is three-quarters of the way down. That's her fourth. And Courtney Hart just can't get the roll. Man. One forty remaining in the game. Fourth foul now on Courtney Hart. She's got eighteen in the game, but I think if this one goes against ABC, she's gonna remember points nineteen and twenty that she didn't get right here. Look at this one. How does that rattle out? Wait a minute. Jeff, it should be 11 shooting the free throws. I don't know why Vo's not at the free throw line. It's Heron who gets the roll. Ties it at 65. It, it, it should have been number 11. Pressure. Should have been Vo. Lopez finds Jackson down low. They bring the double team. Jackson has that one stripped, but gets it back. Back outside, Cassell's three. Off the back iron. Hart tries to keep it alive. Vo stepped on the baseline. A chance for the Marauders as they get it back. Yeah, that one off of Jeremio, so no choice but for Lena Vo. Yeah, good angle to see the foot clearly on the baseline. Break for ABC, the shot no good, the rebound off to Jeremio. All tied up, 108 and counting. They're on, Jeremio. Provado, they swing it around to Brunia who will try for three. Oh. In and out, back in again. Emily Brunia has been huge. The big shot in the final minute, a couple of threes uh -huh. here in overtime, and now a steal by Provado. Provado in from the right, layup no good, and Find Jackson gets handler. back for the rebound. Lopez in transition, feeds Hart, what finds Jackson cutting to the basket off the bottom of the rim, but she's fouled by Brunia. Yeah, right there. That's a break for ABC as Jackson had, as she sometimes does, Michael, had somewhat overrun the play yeah. and actually had herself under the basket at a bad angle. And Sir. Miracle Jackson is a tremendous athlete, great speed, and sometimes I think she can just get moving so fast. Sorry, Jeff, we were having some issues with our scoreboard, have everything rectified now. And, uh. First free throw, no good. Down to 
remaining in the game. Every point so critical now. Jackson needs to gather. Second free throw. Missed the second one. It's on the floor. Timeout. And off to Heron and a timeout taken. And those are big points, Michael. Now it's three, and even a single free throw turns it into two possessions. And, well, it certainly goes without saying that free throws can be so big, particularly down the stretch in a close game, and that's an opportunity missed this time for ABC with 33.7 remaining. Well, it's a disappointing result for ABC at the line, but they need a turnover here, and that means that Miracle Jackson's going to be front and center in that pursuit for ABC. She is unquestionably the most disruptive defender on the team, but Miller going to commit the foul right away on her own. For their part, LA Valley as a team shoots just 56% from the line. So they struggle somewhat from the free throw line as well. Heron shoots 70%. She will head to the line. First foul for Miller. 31.3 remaining. First of two for Heron is good. Well, that was a confident stroke at the line for Jordan Heron. No doubter. She's got 13 in the game to go along with six rebounds and nine assists. She's in the top 10 in the 3C2A and assists at 5.3 a game, and she's going to improve on that number here. Couple of free throws push the LA Valley lead to five with 31.3 remaining. It's ABC Basketball here on SoCalCollegeSports.com. Five-point game, 31.3, and if you're ABC, Michael, I believe you got to try and find Kristen Lopez here. Let's shoot that right there. Lopez steps into a three. Rimming no. Jeremy o had the rebound. It's on the floor. Jackson has it in a crowd. She's fouled. And a whistle comes in. Jackson fouled with 23.7 remaining. And now, Mike, I'd be interested in your thoughts, but now I think if she hits the first, Maybe you think about missing the second. With Jackson and Hart on the floor, you've got a very strong offensive rebounding unit yeah. on the floor. And this is a somewhat undersized LA Valley team. It it's really goes, as we mentioned at the top, with a five guard set. First free throw good for Jackson. Is, is Cassell, is she fouled out? Is Bailey fouled out? No, nope, she's got four. Mm. So, so they know they need to foul, so they need to keep her out here. This is smart play. Too good, and now you bring in Alyssa Taylor. You need to get a little bit more speed out there. See if you can force a turnover. So Miller, Taylor, Lopez, Ignacio, and Hart on the floor. Or it should say Jackson. They get it inbound to Giron. Uh, to Giron. And she will head back to the line, 22.2 remaining. Well, we'll stop the clock here. LA Valley 
eight of 11 as a team from the line in this one. Shooting 73%, her own three of four. Jeff, we do want to clarify 22 Two coming two. here. First free throw up Ooh. and no good. All right. One more coming for Jordan Heron. He's got 14 to go along with six rebounds and nine assists. Second free throw up and good. That makes it two possessions, 71-67. Timeout on the floor. Full timeout. We'll step aside. Marauders down four here on SoCalCollegeSports.com. ABC down four, 22 seconds remaining. Going to need a long one to get themselves fully back in, but it's off the hands of Lopez on the inbound from Miller. Well, that's a crusher. Yeah. Missed on the opportunity to pull closer. They'll bring the pressure. Provado on the sideline. They've got the steal. Lopez forces one up and a whistle and a foul called. What an effort from Kristen Lopez. And Provado trying to hold the ball. Good job by Miller to avoid the foul. That's a tremendous job. And you might be thinking, Provado, why would she hold the ball or not give up the ball? But Provado, the best free throw shooter on the team. And if you're L.A. Valley, you're hoping perhaps that you can get the Marauders to foul Jackie Provado, who shoots 81% from the line. Instead, Miller does a good job to keep her on that sideline without fouling. She loses the handle. And there you see Lopez come up with the ball in the heady play to get the shot up, draw the contact. Now for the Marauders, this is everything saying you this want. This is only two free throws. Well, let's watch here. What? Boy, is, are they trying to say that's a non-shooting foul? Because there's no question she's in three-point range. Makes both. All right, so they get it into Jeremio, and she is immediately fouled. It's a two-point game. Well, that is tough because now if Jeremio can hit two, it's back to two possessions. She's 5 of 5 at the line in the game. Juliet Jeremiel with 13 in the game. Jeff, they, she they hit. It's, uh, this crowd is pretty irate. It was clear that it was a three-pointer. And, Jeff, you're right. How is that not a foul in the act of shooting? And then they tried to say the shot wasn't a three-pointer when it was clearly a three-pointer. Jeremiel, one out of two, so it is a three-point game with 15 seconds. Miller over the line. Off to Lopez. Lopez with the fadeaway off the side of the board and out of bounds. And that will give it back to L.A. Valley. Well, Lopez has to force one. And with seven seconds remaining, they'll get it to Heron. And Heron with a chance to go a long way toward salting this one away for good. 3.6 remaining. If she can hit one here. ABC may be out of time. Well, 
Well, it's up to the captain for L.A. Valley as Heron steps to the line. Can she close this one out? And gets the roll. And that pushes the lead to four. Jeff, think about this last possession here. If they award that as a three-pointer for Kristen Lopez, it's a two-point game. Now you sub in Hart. Miller has that one blocked by Brunia. And the buzzer sounds, and L.A. Valley right, oh, with an on. impressive. Hold, hold on, Stoy. Okay. We, I think Are we have put some time back on? three shots for, for Miller. So they're going to okay, put so some they're time. Gonna call the foul this on wasn't Brunia. at the buzzer. Had to be like probably like a second or maybe .5 left. So she has to make both. Well, it can't be. How do you get five? It can't be the hard five seconds. Here. They're saying there's five seconds on the clock. It sh it should be about a second. Okay, so point five here. So they need two makes. Well, no, it's a five point game. So they need a they need a miracle. They need two makes, and they need to somehow get the miss out to the three-point line. It's going to have it's going to have to be the hardest ricochet we've ever seen. That'll do it. Well, no, it, it, it's a three-pointer. So she needed to hit all three. Now, now she needs two, and then they need a three. But Jeff, you you, you go back to the to the non-three-pointer for Kristen Lopez from three. Clearly a three, and they ruled it was only a two. If she makes all three, and she's a pretty good shooter, makes all three. Into Heron and the Monarchs with a tremendous comeback in this one. Down six with a minute eight remaining, down 14, entering the fourth quarter. And they get the win, 74-71. And... And you know, Mike, we talked uh, about some uh, some calls that were uh, no doubt uh, ones that maybe were a little bit questionable or we wondered the impact they might have in the game. But I know we don't want to take away from the tremendous effort from L.A. Valley after a three-point first quarter uh, for them to bounce back in that fourth quarter and get themselves all the way back in. They hit some clutch shots down the stretch and held on here in overtime. And they moved to 9-1 and one in conference play. They're 11 and one in their last 12. And, and Mike, I want to get your take before we step aside and get ready for the men's game. We've talked a lot about ABC and what they might mean in the postseason. But with this win, LA Valley is now 17 and seven. This is a team that very much is heading for the postseason. There could be little to no question about that. What do you see from the Monarchs in, uh, in terms of where they might fit in in the postseason? Mike, they're a dangerous team. You talk about the five guard action. And I think for a team that plays five guards, they rebound incredibly well. You know, and this is a team coached by Monica Hang from the Ned Mercedic School, and we cover a lot of Ventura basketball. You know, you get a team like that in the postseason that can shoot the basketball like that, you know, anything's possible. So uh, I don't know if they have a good mix in size. They're going to struggle against team with size. We saw that tonight. Uh, we saw that at the matchup uh, versus ABC at L.A. Valley. You know, it's a team that can make a run. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a guard game here in, at the college ranks, particularly the 3C2 level, 3C2A level. Uh, and if you can get points on the board in a hurry and you can mitigate your struggle with size, you see Lena Vo uh, with a lot of athleticism, uh, still kind of learning the game, but she is a menace defensively. If she can stay out of foul trouble when she fouled out tonight and you get those threes and you saw those threes go down, Brunier was terrific down the stretch for L.A. Valley. The Monarchs, you know, they can go for a run. Well, it's a heartbreaker for ABC, a three-point loss in overtime. It snaps their two-game win streak. They fall to 11-13 and 13. overall, 6-4 and four in conference play. L.A. Valley maintains the lead in the Western State. They move to 9-1 and one in conference, 17-7 and seven. overall. We'll step aside, rejoin you, get you ready for the men's game. Uh, so long, everybody, for a few minutes. We'll be back for game two.